Hey everybody, my name is Jeff. In this video I had a little time to do a little bit of casting. Nephew had a couple of pry bars with broken handles on them. And I ended up, the pattern I had before was for a 7 16 square bar. And instead of modifying that one, these that he brought out were half inch. And so I ended up making a new pattern, wanted a little different for him anyway. And well, not real happy with the way they came out, but it'll work fine. And so I show a little bit and tell a little about the furnace and ramming everything up. And I don't have an update on the John Deere 50 right now. I had some parts that were back ordered on me. And until I get the fan shaft back together with the new clutch plates in, or the friction disc, it's kind of holding everything else up. So hopefully it'll be here pretty quick. And I do have some more on the sorghum press. I probably won't add that onto this one. It's a case. Uh, I'll try and do an update on that in the next few days and hopefully get it posted for you. So, hope you like it. And if you do, leave some comments and feel free to subscribe or hit the like button. I was getting ready to cast some handles for a couple pry bars here that my nephew had and found out that the bars are actually half by half, where the ones I did before were only 3 8 wide. So instead of cutting my handle, you know, taking a router and group, making the groove bigger for a half inch, I'm going to make a new one. I actually started making it already, just cut a couple chunks of wood. This is a piece of 2x2 two two that's cut down to about, well, I think it's less than an inch, probably 7 8 We got the holes tight yet now. When I get ready to use it, you actually take a little bigger bit and ream this hole out a little just so it goes together like this it only ends up with one pin in and then your handle lines up the rest of it your actual bar but then it goes in easier to clamp together and like I say the bar keeps this lined up and on the other ones I never even turned them in the lathe I turned it enough on the end to clean the end up but that's all I had to do so anyway on this one I put two, two dolls in until I get it together Then I put a hose clamp on each end just to hold it while I'm turning in between. Then once I get it down to the size and the shape I want, you just cut the ends off. And you've got your basic pattern. Then you have to take a router and cut the grooves in here. So they'll have to be a quarter inch deep and half inch wide slots in there. I'm just using a gouge to rough it in a bit. Just a bit dull. size you want. 
the nut didn't fall out, so I got lucky there. One little hole that I had a nail hole in the boards I used. The doll didn't come through the other side, so I did have that figured right. Take it in the bandsaw, cut the ends off, and then go in and take the router and cut my slots, and we're good to go. Should have done them in the mill first, like I was going to, but <laughs> we'll do it this way. Take it for depth, and that should be it. I think I mentioned back in the Cool Wheels video that I need to redo this lid. The pipe I've got out here for a handle is actually loose now because everything is breaking away underneath. But a couple people wanted to kind of see a little more about the furnace. Uh, Nothing real fancy in there. This is a refractory mix that was just from YouTube or just online. It wasn't YouTube, I don't think, even. Where found a recipe for making a refractory and it's done very good. I've melted a lot of brass and aluminum in here. The blower set up, well, actually, I don't have the LP tank out here yet, but just have a regulator with a valve on for the LP. And it actually goes into a quarter inch pipe and is just open into the, I believe that's an inch and a quarter ID pipe. And got a two inch here. Don't really need the reduction, but it does increase airflow. This is just a furnace blower. And usually you can run it about wide open. It kind of depends on the weather and if you do have the gas wide open or not. And this other line up here in valve is one I had had it set up where you could hook it up to waste oil. You could start it and warm it up with the LP and then open the valve on the waste oil. And it would do real well on that. But it only takes, well this crucible is just a 4 inch ID pipe with a base welded on. But it's 4 inch diameter, 12 inches tall. And you can kind of see here by the way the tube is lined up, it makes a nice swirl inside. So you keep your flame swirling around it, it heats a lot faster. I think I figured out, I've never weighed it exact, I don't believe, but the, that crucible to hold up to the holes up here, slightly below it, is right around 12 pounds of aluminum. I can melt that down in about 15 minutes or certain days it seems like it takes less than that. And it's not real fancy otherwise it's just got a pipe on the side here for the lid and just a rod bent inside with a washer on it and so all you have to do is lift a little bit on the side and it'll swivel right around and you can actually lift the lid right off there's nothing that holds it down into there. Well that's a little bit about the furnace We're about ready to well, I've got the paint drying on the patterns yet for the handles, so pretty quick we'll get them rammed up and get the furnace going and get some aluminum melted and make a couple pours. Pieces of aluminum I've got. These were actually poured in this old muffin tin, <laughs> a little tray for making breakfast muffins or whatever. Poured it in that, otherwise these are out of the, I think I showed that in the Cool Wheels video too, that the just some pieces of two and a half inch angle 
welded together and pieces on the side. And I've got another aluminum intake that's bad there and all some different pieces of aluminum, some brackets for, I think that's a, off a Chevy pickup I believe for AC and alternator bracket or air pump I guess actually. And, and some miscellaneous little pieces in there that are broke up, a couple license plates and a little bit of everything. You got a pile of lead sitting there that a friend brought out that we melt down. Well, that's actually what the pile is back there, are all pieces of lead. And we've got some more setting around. I use casting bullets. Parting dust on it. The sand is already riddled here, so I usually after I use it, I'll mix it up. I don't have a muller made yet. It's on one of the future plans. Been planning to do it for about uh, probably the last four or five years here. And I'll mix it up all by hand and everything, and then when I put it back into the pails, I riddle it back in there just so it's all broke up nice for the next time. Saves a little screwing around. Air tamping, you don't have to really hit it very hard. It sounds like it because of the way this table rattles, but it's a case that a good firm pack is better than packing it too much. If you pack it too hard, the porosity of the sand is limited so the gases don't get out as easy. bigger board out because this one isn't really big enough for this long handle. It looks like more parting dust than is actually going on there. Doesn't really hurt to have extra anyway. So. Well, we'll get this half rammed up and we'll get the furnace lit. First, by the time I get the next one rammed up, it should be ready to pour. This is just a piece of 2x2 two two that I turned on the lathe to make a small ram because your big one on something like this is too big to get into the corners and this is just one I made out of a 4x4. Four four. A lot of people buy them but there's not really any reason to if you got a even a metal lathe you can in fact I think that's what I made that one on originally. Didn't take the time to go up and do it on the wood lathe.
don't really need a pour hole that big. Rather pipe where you don't see. So I'm actually going to put this one off to the side since it's a bigger one. Cut a gate over to it. Sure. How about that? It didn't break when it hit the ground. Well, when I pick it up, it's almost. after I painted the pattern that it's a little bit tight so when I take this off it's probably going to stay on the rod which it did See that I went a little deeper with the hole in order to give it a spot in the first pour. If I knock any sand out or anything that way, it'll go down to the bottom and maybe stay sitting there instead of ending up in my handle. Maybe being the key part. bigger gate than I need in it. Doesn't take much to cut that off later. This will set back together for now. But once I get going get the metal about ready and preheat the rod and put it through. Now this one actually has them in the right spot. has a hole through it already the way they were made with the plastic on there and on the other ones I usually just cut a few grooves in there with a, you know, like a cut off tool something that way or I've even filed notches in before just to give it something to hang on better and if it ever happened to loosen up. With preheating it and everything that way, it bonds to it pretty darn good. This one, because of the pattern being too long for the flats that I had, I cut my slots in the corner of it, so we'll just put it in there diagonally. Parting dust on there. There, if you get casting, this is using the Petro Bond. I used to use a mix with some foundry sand. You can Mix it up using silica sand, and there again found a mix on online. I'll have to look it up again and see where I did find it originally, in case some of you are interested.
After playing around a bit, you learn that you don't have to ram it real hard. But you do want it firm enough to hold and get the shape nice. So kind of play around and see what happens. opposite of the blower. So flames the furnace is warm enough now the flames coming up over the top of the crucible and everything. If it was dark out here you'd probably see it about six or eight inches above the top through that hole. And you can see my pipe is open to the inside because there's something I don't know if I had a bee's nest in the pipe this time and we're burning them out anyway. Probably about five to seven minutes. You can see the crucible is getting a nice, you know, kind of a dull red for the most part, almost cherry red. The aluminum is about half melted. Second one, my sprue hole or where the head will be on this one is right through the end of the handle. Probably ready to pour. I'm gonna move the. I'll move the handles over the hole a little bit. Preheat them some more. Get them nice and hot. Set them in place. And then we'll pour. And I'll have to skim it first. I'm gonna get Ron to video it while I'm doing that. Add a couple more little chunks. Some of them need to be mounted down anyway. Easier to use them when you're in ingots. They're actually would have been ready to go already. Just preheating the ends of the bars good, and then I'll set them in place. If they stay up around probably 500 degrees is enough to buy a tiny pour to aluminum in. It'll keep it from freezing as they call it. It won't get cold too fast and it'll stick to it. What are you laughing about? Showing me with the gloves and short sleeves or what? I'm standing here sweating. You can see it's burning a little paint off of her.
see I need to skim this a little bit again. I knocked some off the top when I was heating those handles. Get a hole in that one. Seal. She's still bubbling right out of the other one yet. I'm definitely burning my board good. Smoking Ronnie out too. So there's how not to do it. Good weed killer though. Depending on how it stopped, when it did finally quit leaking, it might not shrink that much. The other however many handles I've done, they never had to happen yet. It's good to me. Even though it ran away, it came out good. I think what happened is I actually had the handle too hot. This one probably made it too. <laughs> That's where I broke that sand out when I was originally ramming it up when the piece came out with it. Good to go. So even though it didn't look like they were going to make it, it came out good. Too much vibration to hang out that far. Need to center drill it. Put the light center in there for a little while. I did take the end off of this one a little bit where I had the head on top of it. 
Well, it's a little shorter than the other one. But then just basically filed the high spots off and sanded them down. And then stamped them. I don't like these as well as I did my other ones. Uh, actually on the other ones I used the other sand that I mixed up instead of the Petrobon sand. And, and it gives a, actually a rougher texture. This is one of the ones I did before where it's got more of a belly in the middle. And I kind of like that better, but I wanted to try something different with these. This was back in April of 2010. And it is getting pretty mushroomed. I think I did show it in one other video. It's even starting to crack a little there, so I will have to put it back in the lathe and turn her a little bit before it starts chipping off. They're actually getting worn almost smooth now. So it doesn't look as rough as I thought it did compared to the others. Thanks for watching.